Welcome to Land of House. I'm Seth. In a previous video, I installed the Micro Hydro Kuanda screen. It's basically a screen that pulls water into it, sloughs off debris, so the water can be used down in the Micro Hydro PMA. I didn't have time though to connect the actual Kuanda screen to the rest of the system, and so today we're going to make that connection. Instead of installing a two inch pipe from the Kuanda down to my uh, barrel catchment, I thought let's just have some fun and make a manifold to use the inch and a quarter poly pipe that I already have up there. So here's the plan. I'm going to come out of the Kuanda screen with this two inch pipe. That's gonna go into a two inch to three inch uh, reducer. And so we're gonna step into a three inch pipe, which will then have a cap on the other end. And then I can use my favorite product, the Unisil. And this will allow me to put two of these inch and a quarter pipes that go to thread adapters there. So basically that's going to go into that and then we'll have another one over here and this will go to those poly pipes and uh, I think the cross-sectional area of two inch and a quarters should be at least the same as a two inch pipe. Um, so anyway, uh, if not I can always add a third pipe later. So let's go ahead and put this thing together, go up the mountain, connect everything, and hopefully have water into our hydro system. Unisil operates a lot like a bulkhead. You just find a hole saw that matches up to the back and then you drill a hole into your pipe or tank and then whenever you pop this Unisil grommet into that hole you can then place your pipe in there and when that happens it flares out the back side of this grommet and makes a watertight seal. A lot of times you have to file down your pipe some so that it will uh, slide in there a little easier. So I just got this hammer drill. I'm going to go ahead and put two holes in this pipe and we should be rocking and rolling. I took a file to the pipe here to kind of knock down that edge. May have to add some soap and water to get it to work. Now I've not installed one of these on such a curved small pipe before, so hopefully it's going to work. I'm probably going to have to go get some soap, but we'll go ahead and give this a try. Yeah, how are we doing? Nope, okay. Let me get some soapy water real quick. Let's try that again. Just got some soapy water here, which the uh, company actually recommends whenever you use these Unisil. Also gonna put a glove on because I'm a pansy. You know what I always say, if at first you don't succeed, just get a bigger hammer. So I'm using the uh, block here and putting my whole weight on it to get this thing in here. Okay, nice. Seems to have made a pretty good seal there. So that's what I was going for. <laughs> Holes were a little off, but it should be fine. Anyway, that was a lot of talk just to say that uh, here is yeah, one manifold for getting water out of a two inch pipe here, like that, down to two inch and a quarters. There's probably a simple adapter that would have done that. But um, anyway, it was fun just playing around with some PVC. Up on top of the mountain now, I have a two inch pin stock which goes down to the actual PMA itself. This 55 gallon barrel acts as a air diffuser and a silt catchment because the pipe comes halfway out the middle there. Up here, I've got my three inch and a quarter black poly pipe on this little bridge. And that's what I didn't really want to replace with two inch pipe. So. That's where we're going to try out this uh, new manifold here. So how are we doing? You can see from last time there is a lot less water because the fall time around here there's just not much water flowing in this creek. A lot of leaves have gotten stuck. Let's see how stuck they are. Not too bad. So there were a lot of people saying the design was uh, not the best for my little box here. 
because I was losing so much water. But as you can see, it's mostly all going in here. There is a little bit more on this side than there is on that side. I think that shows up on the camera. Um, but I think it's pretty good. So I bet I'm losing a good bit of water down in that crack, even though the water seems to be making an air pocket and going over. I will probably end up putting some kind of little sheet metal uh, down in there that loops over and maybe ends about right here so that it will uh, not cause this little issue right here. I'll just skip over that and go straight to this. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do now. Hopefully, we're gonna attach this pipe to the two inch outlet and then we will attach two of our, um, I guess probably these over here. Looks like that one's got to step up. Anyway, if we can get these out, then we will be able to get those onto our new manifold. Actually, I think we can use this one because it looks like it's an inch and a quarter right there. So I brought a couple of tools. Hopefully it's all we need. Get that hose clamp down there. And so maybe this will come sliding off. Yeah, okay, nice. And I can use these uh, channel locks here to get that off. I'll probably pull those bulkheads off because those are still good. I believe that's it. The manifold is now installed. I put some rocks on there to make sure it is the lowest point so the water always goes down to it. So it looks like uh, there's just a tiny bit of overflow coming out of the bottom of the box, I think. I think that's what that is. Anyway, uh, let's go down here to the tank and see if the, all the water is going down there like we want it to. So I should have this one and this one. Yes, yeah, so the water is definitely pouring out of both of them, which is pretty good. I think I didn't choose this one because it always sticks up so high. Anyway, so that one's not there, but the other two have water in it. So if I close this off, should start filling up and we'll see how much water is coming out of this overflow. It was a fairly simple fix to put in this little manifold. I think it's gonna do quite well. Now, of course, this is designed to have a two inch pipe come out and go downhill, but I didn't want to replace all of my poly pipe. I may still do that in a future video, but for now, we'll just use these two inch and a quarter. And I think that's gonna be able to pull all the water that I've got going into the system right now, at least. The inch and a quarter pipe is able to pull all of the water at the moment with no overflow. You can hear how this barrel is gulping air, and that's really good for the hydro system. You don't want that air getting down into this pipe right here. So uh, this is a 4.5 gallon bucket. So if you say 60 seconds times 4.5 is 270. So if we divide the uh, 270 by the seconds it takes to fill this, we'll have our flow rate of the creek. Let me go ahead and time that real quick.
29 seconds. Got my phone out. 270 divided by 29 is uh, 9.3 gallons per minute. So not a lot of flow rate at the moment. Now I've seen this thing up to about 400, but the average for most of the year is between 10 and 30. So at nine, we're a little bit low. One thing I'm noticing is that this pipe right here is a little high compared to that one. I wonder if I can get that to sink back down a little bit, if it'll pull more water. Oh, for sure. I put some big rocks here on this pipe to bring it down some, and it pulled a lot more water in. It's actually losing uh, no water on this side anymore like it was. And then over here, I put a little rock underneath this to lift this side up some and it's pretty much eliminated the loss that was happening right here. So most of the water that's hitting the screen is now going into the manifold. So that's working really well. I'm pleased with it. I was looking at this. Uh, definitely has those little air bubbles, so most of the water is going over, but I can see there's loss like right over here. My guess is what I can actually do is get some of that rubber uh, roof, like rubber roof material and kind of line this in here and just have it flap over to maybe this point right here. It's nice and level so the water just flows over uh, past all those gaps right there, including this one, which is pretty tight. That's the main one where it's losing. But I think that will solve our issue. Now there's a couple of little tiny leaks like that one right over there that I'm just gonna have to live with. As the wood swells, it may fix that problem. I feel like the intake is much improved from the previous version, which is now resting right up here. I'll take that apart and haul it back down the mountain later. But this new system seems to be pulling water quite nicely. I'll have to try again whenever there is a heavier flow to see if it's gonna pull all the water with just using these two uh, inch and a quarter pipes. I may have to add the third one later. And to do that, I might just go out the cap on the end. I'll have to see if there's enough room uh, but anyway, I think for now, I'm gonna leave this where it is. I may do one more update on this intake whenever I install that roof rubber to uh, bridge those gaps. But for the moment, I think we're good. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below if you see a big issue or if it needs to be improved upon. We can always do more videos uh, based on your suggestions. But anyway, I'm Seth with Land of House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. I'm gonna open up the pin stock and you can hear the sound of the vacuum just suck this water down. That's fun. Okay, I'm gonna head down to the turbine now. Down here at the turbine, see how things are going. We got, looks like two nozzles open, but there's junk stuck in there. And there's also not enough pressure to do anything. The main nozzle right here, I'm gonna have to open up and clean out because there's snails and rocks stuck in there where that screen was down.